Okay, uh, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, the session Post-Quantum Cryptography 3. So, uh, it's the final day of the conference, so I hope you've been enjoying yourself so far. Uh, for those of you who are really awake and uh, keeping an eye on the program, once upon a time this was called Post-Quantum Cryptography 1 because there was Post-Quantum 1, Post-Quantum 2, Post-Quantum 1, Post-Quantum 2, but now it's Post-Quantum 3. Uh, so we have three talks in this session. Uh, the first two will be online and the third one will be uh, live here in person. Uh, the first talk is uh, Watermarking PRFs Against Quantum Adversaries by uh, Fuyiki uh, Kitagawa. And uh, I will uh, let him uh, also announce his uh, co-author. So please go ahead. So can you see my slides? Uh, yes. So thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm Fuki from MTT, and this is a joint work uh, with Ryo Nishimaki from MTT. Uh, I'm talking. I'm going to talk about uh, watermarking PRF against quantum adversaries. So I will start with uh, what is software watermarking. So in software watermarking, uh, we can embed a mark into a program uh, in the way that uh, if the mark is removed. Uh, the functionality of the program is also destroyed. The purpose of software watermarking is uh, proving ownership, uh, preventing illegal copies, and so on. So in software watermarking, uh, we can deal with only unrunnable programs. So if a program is runnable, uh, the mark uh, can be easily removed by uh, simply running the description of the original program. So for this reason, uh, many previous works have focused on watermarking uh, cryptographic programs. So especially uh, most of them studied a watermarking PRF uh, where we can embed a mark uh, into the variation uh, circuit of the PRF. So PRF is uh, one of the simplest uh, crypto primitive, but uh, at the same time, it is sufficient for realizing many other crypto programs, uh, crypto primitives. Uh, also, some recent works uh, found an interesting application uh, of watermarking crypto programs to quantum crypto. So by combining it with quantum money, uh, we can construct a secure software racing, uh, which is a variant of copy protection. So in this work, uh, we study watermarking PRF against quantum adversaries. Uh, more concretely, uh, our goal is to propose a watermarking scheme uh, such that uh, even if a quantum adversary generates a quantum program uh, in order to remove the embedded mark, uh, we can correctly extract the embedded mark. And this is our result. So first, uh, we define watermarking PRF against quantum adversaries. Especially, uh, we define unremovability, uh, which is the main security notion of watermarking PRF. Uh, against adversaries who output quantum programs. And also, uh, we construct watermarking PRF against quantum adversaries. Uh, concretely, uh, we propose uh, two constructions. Uh, the first one is secret extractable scheme uh, based on AWE. And the other one is public uh, extractable scheme based on IO. Uh, so here, he secret extractable means that uh, we need secret extraction key uh, in order to extract the embedded mark. And on the other hand, uh, public extractable means that uh, we don't need any secret information uh, in order to extract the embedded mark. So anyone can extract the embedded mark. So our construction methodology for achieving these constructions is highly general. So it can be extended to uh, watermarking other primitives such as public key encryption. So this is our result. And I will talk about the uh, technical overview of this work. So the biggest issue uh, we have to deal with is that uh, quantum programs are inherently stateful programs. So this problem was uh, pointed out by Jandri in the context of uh, Twitter tracing against quantum adversaries. So in uh, classical Twitter tracing or classical watermarking, uh, we usually assume that uh, pilot programs are stateless programs. So this assumption is reasonable since uh, we can rewind pilot programs into their original state uh, if those pilot programs are classical programs. Uh, however, in general, uh, it is impossible to rewind quantum programs into their original state. 
Uh, so we have to deal with quantum programs as stateful programs. So we have to define uh, our unremovability notion and we have to construct our scheme uh, by taking this uh, stateful nature of quantum programs into consideration. Uh, fortunately, uh, for the definitional work, uh, we can use uh, Jandori's technique uh, developed in context of data tracing against quantum adversaries. Uh, however, uh, for the construction work, uh, we cannot use uh, Jandori's uh, data tracing technique. So we propose new extraction method. So hereafter, uh, I will talk about the technical details of our work. So I will start with the definition of uh, quantum watermarking, a uh, watermarking against quantum adversaries. So the syntax uh, we use in this work is essentially the same as single key traceable PRF uh, introduced by Guerrero et al. And it consists of four algorithms, uh, gem, ibar, mark, and extract. The gem algorithm and ibar algorithm form standard PRF, uh, except that the gem algorithm also output uh, extraction key XK uh, together with the PRF key. And the mark algorithm takes as input uh, PRF key and the mark M and output a marked evaluation circuit C prime. And finally, uh, the extraction algorithm takes as input extraction key and the quantum program Psi and output a mark M. So we require uh, functionality preserving for watermarking PRF, uh, which is corresponding to the correctness notion of watermarking PRF. And uh, functionality preserving requires that the marked evaluation circuit C prime has almost the same functionality as the original evaluation circuit. So this is a syntax and functionality preserving of watermarking PRF against the quantum adversaries. And now I move on to the security and unremovability. So the definition of unremovability is roughly as follows. So we generate a marked evaluation circuit C prime uh, from PRF key and mark M, and we give it to an adversary and the adversary generates a quantum program Psi. Then uh, unremovability requires that uh, no adversary can generate a quantum program Psi, such that a Psi is a good quantum program in the sense that its functionality is close to the original evaluation circuit, but the extraction algorithm fails to extract M. Of course, uh, to make this definition rigorous, uh, we have to define the notion of good quantum program more concretely. So basically, uh, in this work, we define good quantum program as the program uh, that breaks uh, with PRF security uh, as done by Guerrero et al. But when we do this, uh, we have to take the stateful nature of quantum programs into consideration. So the problem is as follows. So to check whether a quantum program is a good quantum program or not, uh, we have to measure the advantage of the quantum program for breaking weak PRF security. However, such a measurement process itself might destroy the quantum program. So if we once confirm that a quantum program is a good quantum program, the post-measurement program state uh, might not be a good quantum program anymore. So in order to avoid this issue, uh, in this work, we use the notion of live quantum programs uh, introduced by Jandori uh, as a notion of good quantum programs. Uh, this notion of live quantum programs uh, is defined by using projective implementation also introduced by Jandori. So after talking about some backgrounds on quantum programs, uh, I will introduce a projective implementation and the notion of live quantum programs. So the success probability of a quantum program for breaking weak PRF security is defined as follows. So let uh, DW PRF be a distribution that generates random bit B, a random input X, random output Y0, and correct output y1 of the input x and output b x y b. Uh, this distribution the WPRF is roughly corresponding to the security game of weak PRF security. 
So uh, the success probability of a quantum program for breaking weak PRF security is the probability that a uh, given X and Y B, the quantum program correctly guesses the bit B, uh, where B X Y B is generated from the distribution D W P R F. So here, uh, this quantum program Psi uh, can be seen as a superposition of many quantum programs with different success probabilities with respect to the distribution DWPRF. Uh, in other words, uh, we can decompose uh, Psi uh, with respect to the distribution DWPRF. More concretely, uh, we can write uh, Psi as uh, some mention of uh, some mention P alpha P Psi P, uh, where Psi P is a quantum program uh, with success probability P with respect to the distribution DWPRF. And some mention P alpha P squared is equal to one. So given this background, uh, I will introduce uh, projective implementation and the notion of live quantum programs. So as I said, a quantum program can be seen as a superposition of many quantum programs. Then a projective implementation is a measurement process that measures the success probability of one of uh, those quantum programs contained in the superposition. So concretely, uh, it is defined as follows. So suppose we have a quantum program Psi, uh, which can be written as some mention P alpha P Psi P. Then uh, if we apply projective implementation for DWPRF, uh, we obtain outcome P with probability alpha P squared. And by applying this projective implementation, uh, the program state Psi is collapsed into uh, another quantum program Psi P, uh, which is a quantum program with success probability P. So as the name suggests, uh, projective implementation is projective. So if we apply projective implementation for DWPRF again, uh, we obtain outcome P with probability one. So this is projective implementation. And by using uh, this projective implementation, uh, we can define the notion of live quantum programs. So we say that a quantum program Psi is live quantum program if the result P of uh, projective implementation DWPRF is significantly greater than one half. So by defining so, uh, if we once confirm that a quantum program is a live quantum program, then uh, we can confirm that the post measurement state uh, is surely has high success probability. And also uh, for classical programs, uh, this notion of live quantum program is the same as a uh, classical notion of good programs. Uh, such as uh, the one uh, used by Guerrero et al. in the context of traceable PRF. So by using uh, this notion of live quantum program, uh, we can restate our definition of unremovability as follows. So suppose we generate a Mach variation circuit uh, C prime from PRF key and Mach M, and we give it to an adversary and adversary generates quantum program Psi. Then unremovability guarantees that no adversary can generate a quantum program Psi such that a Psi is a live quantum program, but uh, the extraction algorithm fails to extract M. So this is a definition of uh, quantum watermarking, again, uh, watermarking PRF against quantum adversaries. So next, uh, so given this definition, uh, I will talk about how we realize uh, watermarking PRF against quantum adversaries. So our goal is to uh, realize a watermarking PRF scheme uh, such that uh, even if an adversary generates quantum program in order to remove it uh, embedded mark, uh, as long as the quantum program is a live quantum program, uh, we can correctly extract the embedded mark M. So usually uh, in watermarking, uh, we extract the embedded mark uh, by applying several tests on success probability and observing the results. Uh, however, uh, in the case of quantum watermarking, uh, the set of applicable tests is highly limited uh, compared to the classical watermarking. Uh, this is because uh, due to the stateful nature, a test can destroy a quantum program. So concretely, uh, the difficulty we have to deal with is as follows. Uh, in watermarking, an embedded mark is chosen from super polynomial size set. 
So in this case, uh, we couldn't extract the embedded mark in one shot. Uh, we have to extract the embedded mark in a bit-by-bit -bit manner. And in order to uh, realize such a bit-by-bit -bit manner extraction process, uh, we need to realize a test TI for every I, such that uh, each TI, each test TI can be used to extract the ice bit of the mark, and each TI does not destroy the quantum program. So if some uh, test TI destroyed the quantum program, uh, we couldn't extract the rest bit of the embedded mark. So the technical challenge uh, in this work is to realize such a test TIs. So in the rest of my talk, uh, I will talk about my main technical idea for realizing uh, these tests. So our main idea is to use uh, what we call reverse projective property of projective implementation, uh, which can be explained as follows. Uh, let D fail uh, be the distribution uh, that generates BXY uh, from the distribution DWPRF and outputs uh, one minus BXY. So recall that uh, DWPRF uh, is a distribution uh, corresponding to the weak PRF security gain. Then a uh, projective implementation for this distribution, the fail, uh, is a measurement that measures failure probability of a quantum program. Uh, this is roughly because a uh, projective implementation for the fail uh, measures the probability that the outcome of a quantum program is not B uh, given XY. Then uh, consider the following situation. So suppose we have a quantum program Psi, uh, which can be written as some mention P alpha P Psi P. And also suppose we apply uh, projective implementation for DWPRF, uh, namely we measure success probability of the quantum program and we obtain the outcome P. So in this case, uh, the quantum program is collapsed into another quantum program uh, Psi P uh, which is a quantum program with success probability P. Uh, from the projective property of projective implementation, uh, if we apply projective implementation for DWPRF again to the quantum program, uh, we obtain outcome P with probability one. So here, uh, the reverse projective property says that if we apply projective implementation for D fail and measure a failure probability of a quantum program, after applying projective implementation for DWPRF, uh, we obtain outcome one minus P uh, with probability one. And most importantly, uh, this application of uh, projective implementation for D fail after projective implementation for DWPRF does not affect the quantum program. So in other words, uh, the post measurement state after applying a projective implementation for D fail uh, remains Psi P. So this is a reverse projective property. So we can prove uh, this reverse project property by using the fact that a project implementation for DWPRF and project implementation for DFAIL uh, consists of exactly the same set of operators. And the only difference between these two measurements is labels of those operators. So by combining this uh, reverse projective property with the standard projective property, uh, we can obtain the following key fact. So suppose we have live quantum program. So this means that if we apply projective implementation for DWPRF and measure the success probability of the quantum program, uh, we obtain outcome one over two plus epsilon for some inverse polynomial epsilon. Then uh, our key fact says that as long as we apply projective implementation for DWPRF or projective implementation for D fail, the quantum program remains live. The quantum program is not destroyed. And every time we apply projective implementation for DWPRF, uh, we obtain outcome one over two plus epsilon. And every time we apply projective implementation for D fail, uh, we obtain outcome one over two minus epsilon. So in short, uh, this key fact says that uh, as long as we measure only success probability and failure probability, uh, we can measure those two values successfully without destroying the quantum program. So this is our key fact. And finally, uh, I will talk about how we realize uh, our extraction method uh, by using this key fact. So our extraction method uh, uses 
a test ti with the following properties for every i. So suppose we generate a Mark II variation circuit C prime from PRF key and the Mark M, and we give it to an adversary and the adversary generates a live content program. Then uh, this test ti has the property that if the ice bit of the emitted mark uh, mi is equal to zero, uh, from the view of the adversary, uh, this test ti looks like projective implementation for DWPRF, uh, which is a measurement on success probability. And on the other hand, uh, if mi is equal to one, uh, from, the from the view of the adversary, uh, this test ti looks like a projective implementation for DFA, uh, which is a uh, measurement on failure probability. So if TI satisfies these properties, from our key fact, uh, the outcome of TI is one over two plus epsilon if MI is equal to zero, and the outcome of TI is one over two minus epsilon if MI is equal to one. So we can extract uh, uh, MI by applying this test TI and observing uh, whether the result is uh, greater than one half or not. And also uh, from our key fact, uh, TI does not destroy the content program. Uh, this is because uh, TI looks like uh, either one of projective implementation for EWPRF or projective implementation for DFA, uh, both of which do not destroy the content program. And as a result, uh, we can apply uh, this test TI for every I, and we can correctly extract the every bit of the mark. So due to the time uh, restriction, uh, I couldn't talk about how we actually realize such a test TI uh, in this work. So if you're interested in this part, uh, please check our paper. So this is a summary of my talk. So uh, in this work, we define watermarking PRF against quantum adversaries. And we also construct uh, quantum watermarking, uh, watermarking PRF against uh, quantum adversaries. Uh, we propose two constructions. Uh, the first one is secret extraction scheme based on the uh, LW assumption. And the other one is public extraction scheme based on IO. So our construction methodology is highly general and it can be extended to uh, watermarking as a primitive such as public key encryption. So this is the end of my, end of my talk. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any questions? If people have questions, uh, please come to the microphone. If there's people who have questions on Zulip, I will look at that as well. Any questions so far? So I do have one question. So um, you worked at uh, if the adversary outputs a quantum program. So if the adversary outputs a classical program, does your notion then collapse to uh, the known classical notion or do you still have some differences there? Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Uh, our notion is strictly stronger than a classical program. So uh, if we restrict our attention to uh, the buffer is that output only uh, classical programs, uh, our definition implies uh, classical automatic PRF. Right, but is it potentially stronger? Is in this is in the sense that if you have a classical program and you satisfy the old definition, do you then still satisfy your new definition given that it's a classical program? Yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Nothing on Zulip. Okay. If not, then let's thank the speaker again. Thank you very much.